I used to think that eating healthy was really, really complicated. I also used to believe every single trend and honestly every bit of misinformation I would see online or on social media or just hear from someone. I found the actual science behind food and eating so interesting that I decided to move to another country and get a bachelor's degree in nutritional science. And now, three years later, after endless research, spending my nights cramming chemical formulas and then my days standing in a lab and finally graduating, I decided to make this video because healthy eating is not too complicated and you are not too busy to take care of your health. So these are nine tips that will make eating healthy very easy, very doable, and that will change the way that you think about food. As a teenager, I was interested in food and nutrition for one reason, weight loss. Partially due to insecurities and just being a teenager, partially due to societal pressures, but it just occupied my mind so much. Over the years, I've learned so much, not only for uni, but also for my everyday life. It made me realize that food has a really important role. It not only helps us change physically to feel better in our bodies, but most importantly, it changes our energy levels, it can impact our productivity, and it has such a huge impact on our overall well-being, on our mood, on our mental health. So the way I view food and the perspective that I want to carry throughout this whole video is to focus less on weight loss or weight gain and to focus more on eating in a way that makes us physically healthy but also helps us feel our best. Now let's talk about the actual changes. Do not make any drastic changes. Eating healthy is supposed to be a lifestyle change, not a six-week challenge or 10-week challenge or whatever. By not making drastic changes, we can actually ensure that we can keep this healthy eating habit up for a long time. Long-term changes might sound really scary, but do you really prefer to go from one diet to the next one? To always have that yo-yo effect of doing a diet, then stopping, then again getting back into really unhealthy habits and then just doing it over again. Until when, honestly? Because at some point you have to reach a point where you realize that it doesn't work out in the long term and you need long term changes. So in my opinion, the best way to achieve long term changes is to go through the small steps. There are some really small changes that can have huge impacts. The things that I would focus on is to eat less heavily processed foods. Try not to make like deep fried food at home. Also, when you're cooking, try to just use a little bit less oil. Use a non-stick pan. Put stuff in the oven instead of frying it. Try to lower the intake of saturated fats such as butter. Same with salt. If you have problems with your salt intake, use seasoning. Just buy some seasoning. You don't need salt for everything. How hard is it to cook? No, really, just think about it. If you are scared about cooking and you always say, well, I don't know how to cook. Really, how hard is it to cook? There are videos on YouTube that are like, learn how to cook in one hour. You can do it. It's not that hard to cut up some veggies, to boil some potatoes and to put some chicken in the oven. Yes, cooking is a science, but it can be done at the lowest level possible so that you can have food that you cooked yourself in your own home so that you do not have to rely on takeout and you have control over what you eat. So stop telling yourself that you cannot cook. Trust me, you can cook. Google recipes for your favorite foods. They might not be that hard to make and just learn a few recipes. If you're capable of building a chair from Ikea, you are capable to cook, okay? It's just reading instructions cutting stuff, putting stuff in a pot. It's not that hard. Do yourself a favor, learn how to cook. Cook more than one portion or two portions or whatever you need to cook in the moment so that you can have dinner or you can have lunch the next day. Food does not go bad in a day if you store it properly. You cook it, you can wait for it to cool down a little bit and then you put it in a container and you put it in the fridge. It's not gonna go bad. I mean, unless you, I don't know, unless your fridge is hot, I don't know what to tell you. It's not gonna go bad. So stop with that excuse. You need to realize that the effort it takes to cook a little bit more is gonna be so much lower than the effort that it takes you to cook everything from scratch again. If you're enjoying this video, make sure to subscribe to my channel. 
Also, I post a bunch of what I eat in a day videos over on my Instagram if you want to get some day-to-day -day inspiration and also if you want to see that it is okay to eat things like brownies and gummy bears and all of that, head over there. It's a no bullshit what I eat in a day. I don't plan it beforehand and sometimes it's chaotic. Also, if you want to drink more water, just carry a water bottle around with you at all times. It's such a good way to just drink more water. This is a one liter water bottle and if I have it next to me, I know I will drink it and I only need to refill it like twice a day. I want to show you something. These are my meal prep containers that I do not use for meal prep. Yes. I actually do not truly enjoy to prep meals because I'm one of those people that will get bored of a meal. However, you can prep ingredients and it works just as well, if not better, because the food just is more fresh and tastes better and you can just assemble it however you like. For instance, one thing that I often do is I boil some rice, I put some chicken in the oven or I make some kind of beef or veggies, tofu, whatever. Then I open a can of beans, I take the beans out of the can. Please take your stuff out of the can, do not leave it in the can overnight. And then I make sure to buy some lettuce and tomatoes. I put all the ingredients separately in the containers. If you need visuals, then I would have maybe one container for beans, one for chicken, one for rice, separately, put a lid on them, put them in the fridge, and then the day off, I can just assemble. I can make, for instance, a burrito bowl, some rice, I throw the meat over it, I throw some beans over it, I cut up the tomatoes and the lettuce, I add some spicy sauce, and then there's my bowl. I can also make a burrito, so I completely forget about the rice and I put the rest of the ingredients into the burrito. I can also make a salad out of the lettuce and tomato and put it separately, and then maybe if I'm sick of the rice, I can just boil some potatoes really quick or and eat that with the chicken. It offers so much more flexibility and it takes maybe 10 minutes every day to just assemble the stuff. It's the perfect habit for busy people, for busy schedules, or when you want to be disciplined with what you eat, but you just cannot eat the same thing over and over again. I just love how we're moving around through the kitchen. Um, but I wanted to show you something else which actually maybe I shouldn't show you because there's literally nothing written on here and also you cannot really see it because of the light. But this is my calendar. I got it from for like five euros from somewhere and I love because it just sticks to the fridge. It's, it's magnetic. You can write on it. The next point is to plan your meals. Doesn't matter if you get a calendar, if you put a piece of paper on your fridge in your kitchen somewhere, you can do it in your notes app, you can do it in Notion. If you really wanna be organized, do it in Notion. But know what you're gonna eat each day of the week. I will have stuff written on here. So for instance, I know that on Sundays I will cook about three portions of chicken and rice. Yes, that's boring, but let's just go with that. I will just write chicken and rice, chicken and rice, chicken and rice. Then I know I have four more lunches that I need to plan so I can already think about what they're gonna be. And I can think of the ingredients and put them on my grocery list. I can also think about the fact that I might need to time block half an hour on Wednesday evening to cook some more lunches. Same goes with dinner and this really helps you to have the groceries at home when you need them. To not spend so much time at the grocery store just thinking about what you're gonna cook. It's minimal effort. It's such a great way to make your life easier, save some time, also save some money because you're less likely to waste ingredients. And also, this doesn't have to be a definitive schedule. You can just ignore that. If you want pizza one evening, order pizza. If you're going out with friends, fine. Just ignore the damn schedule. Ow. I've also been on a run, so I'm drinking my electrolytes right now. I don't know if you can see, but I'm very like shiny and red. Why am I sitting on the floor? Well, this is my pantry. And while it's not particularly beautiful or organized or aesthetic, I don't have matching jars with labels in it. The main point of this pantry is that I always have some easy ingredients at home that I know I can cook at least one meal with. So I will always have some pasta, I have some pesto, I have some tuna in the back. Oh, I love these. If you're Eastern European, you know what these are. Um, it's like rice in wine leaves. It's amazing, don't knock it until you try it. A bunch of stuff that I can just use to make a meal if I just, if I have nothing else. 
if I have nothing cooked, I need something really fast. I go into the pantry, I mean, I look into the pantry because I cannot really walk into it and I know I will find something. So stock your pantry with things that you like, things that you know you will reach for when you need them because you need to be able to rely on yourself. Are we still talking about food? I don't know. This is a full on kitchen tour. It might not be the video you wanted, but welcome to my kitchen tour. I'm joking, let's continue. Snacks. This is where I, I keep my snacks and my supplements, by the way. A lot of people will say, do not keep unhealthy snacks in the food because you will eat them. I kind of agree with that, only partially. If you know you have no self-control, maybe that's a good idea, but what is even better is to build self-control and to learn how to enjoy things in moderation. I love gummy bears. I've always loved gummy bears, especially the sour ones. I have these two bags that I've had for, I don't know, a few days. They are open. I used to not be able to open a bag without finishing it. Over the years, you know, just practicing mindful eating, self-control, I've learned that I can have my favorite snacks in the apartment without absolutely demolishing them. So that just goes to show that you do not need to completely eliminate all of your favorite snacks. You can work on eating them in moderation. While we are on the topic of moderation, I think it's really important to talk about restriction and this trend of labeling food as good or bad. Have you heard of clean eating? What does clean even mean? For me, clean means that if I grab a carrot that's been inside the earth, like growing, that carrot is not clean, but if I wash it, it's gonna be clean. I know this is not what the trend refers to, but that's what clean is for me, okay? Clean means the absence of dirt, maybe of bacteria. But why is, for instance, a piece of bread not clean? Like, no. So even if social media, society, doesn't label a food as being clean or healthy, you can still eat it. So please, if you take one thing away from this video, is to eat balanced. Eat things that you like, make some healthier decisions every now and then, but do not restrict yourself. The last topic and one of my favorite topics is misinformation because there is so much regarding nutrition. It's a crazy field of studies and of opinions and of people who have no clue what they're talking about who post stuff on the internet. I also post stuff on the internet, I'm aware of that. There are often headlines or Instagram posts or whatever that are just scaring people for no reason where one study came out that found some random correlation and now it's like Yeah, if you eat chocolate, you're gonna die of a heart attack in the next five years. Please chill. First of all, one study does not mean a lot because oftentimes there's one study that finds a positive correlation, but if you actually research, you will find nine studies that did not find that correlation. Do not let yourself get scared into not eating something or eating a lot of something because of one study. You can always do your own research. There are so many resources available. Also, usually every single country has its own institute of nutrition or like governmental organization. It's called something different in every single country. And they will usually publish good scientific opinions and also just have a bunch of really useful information on their website. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know if I should make more videos about nutrition and I will see you in my next video. Bye-bye.